Hello Controls Champions, welcome to another installment of the Breen Machine video blog. I'm your host, John Breen, and today we're going to talk about lighting. This is the most important part of any industrial vision project. It is the processing outside the processing. This is the analog to the digital. Let's get started. So first of all, let me just show you what my setup looks like. I've lowered the camera just a little bit, but the biggest, the, the, a more important thing to point out is that I've blocked out the window that was behind our inspection. And I wanted to show you what happens when we're just using ambient light See, the window went away. I adjusted the exposure so that I'm seeing an image. Maybe it's not perfect. But do you see how this is flickering? It's bouncing between bright and dark. And you can also see that effect in the focus number here. This green line is bouncing up and down. And this isn't gain. Our gain is set at zero. And noise from gain would look like grainy. Yes, the image has some graininess to it, but this flicker is actually from the light. And you can get a flicker from fluorescent lighting. You can get a flicker from LED lighting. This happens to be LED lighting. Um, so be very aware of that. Incandescent lighting in general doesn't create a flicker, but you know, it's also, uh, it doesn't last as long as other things. And so you, you don't want to be changing light bulbs all the time out there on your automation line. Very good example. Pay attention to this and, uh, if you do want to use ambient fluorescent LED, like make sure whatever your application is, you're not going to see this flicker because that's not very helpful. Next thing I want to talk about, this picture that I have here, it's a color picture, but we only have a monochrome camera. And this is always something that you have to decide for your application. But my approach is monochrome unless you need color for some reason. And there are a few reasons for that. Partially, it's you can get more resolution from a monochrome camera in a measurement application. And uh, we can talk about that in more depth later. You can also um, still get some effects of, of color recognition and matching based on lighting and filtering that you do. Uh, black and white cameras are also faster and simpler to inspect. They're cheaper. So again, they're just the default unless you need a color camera for some reason. And I think that's pretty well agreed on in industry, whoever you talk to. Just might come as a surprise to, uh, you know, people who are coming into the industry that are used to digital cameras always being color. It's not the case in industrial inspection. This image that we're looking at right now, this square in particular, is a representation of two different colored, of colored parts, blue, and red. And I'll tell you, just looking at it with my eyeball, I think the blue is darker and we're going to see that in this demonstration, but I'm going to shine a flashlight on it. that has different colors. And I want you to see how certain items pop. So here I'm going to shine the red light. Notice the ones that pop. The opposite ones are going to pop in just a second when I click over to blue light. So this is a way that you can sort color without a color camera. It's all lighting. In addition to that, I've got a filter that I can show you. This is called a band passed red filter. So it only lets red light through and it blocks anything above or below that in the spectrum. I don't know how well this will show up on the camera. If you look through it, things that look relatively white look red in this lens, in this filter. I don't know if I can get a get the reflection here, but the reflections tend to look blue or green. So it's reflecting these other lights and letting red through. I'll do the same demonstration here with uh, a different colored light. Red gets through pretty well. Blue doesn't really get through at all. Green doesn't really get through at all. If I shine white through it, I see red on the other side. Now this is, this light is much brighter than what, what the red comes through, but that's just the red component of this LED light. 
which we would expect to be pretty dim. So when we put this on the camera, and it, it fits here right in front of the lens, obviously our, our whole world gets a little darker because now we're blocking out what is allowed to come in. But now we could light up this image with any kind of light that contains red, and again, we could see those red parts separated out. But before I show you that filter, I want to also show you the effects of the built-in lighting. Right now we're on ambient, but if we use the built-in lighting on this paper, this is kind of a shiny paper. So when I turn on integrated lighting and get the exposure to something reasonable, Notice that big white splotch. That's obviously just something is reflecting uh, straight back up in there. It's, it's glare. It's not diffuse light. So I have this diffuser and I, I took it off right now, but this is intended to make that light more diffuse. And uh, it may also be polarizing, but that would be a way to reduce the glare. And so I'll show you that in a moment as well. Okay, so as you can see, I put the diffuser back on these lights. Uh, those ring lights, remember we were seeing some glare. I also put that filter, the red, red bandpass filter back in there. So let's see how it looks. That filter does make things a lot darker. We expected that, so I'm gonna change the exposure to be a little higher. We would be expecting that the red ones, the red parts on that image will pop, will you know show up brighter than the blue ones. And that's absolutely true. And this is with the same, uh, the same ambient lighting we were using before. So again, it's just the LEDs in my office. Looks like I'm also seeing a stronger uh, shadow from the camera itself. The next thing I wanted to show you here for comparison is remember when we used the built-in lighting, we were getting some glare issues. Now that we've got the diffuser on there, let me set this to something that's not crazy. Let's go back to where we were before. A lot less glare. That's a lot more reasonable. The difference between diffusion and polarization, I mentioned polarization earlier. Diffusion just means it's taking like a single point of light that might be shining in a very specific direction and it's spreading it out a little bit. And I think that's what we're seeing here. It's just softening the light a little bit. So if you're getting a, a hard line or something from the light source, that may help just spread it out and make things more even less clear. Polarization, on the other hand, isn't about making it softer or spreading it out. It's about lining up all the light waves to be going in the same direction. And without talking physics that I'm not qualified to talk about, let's just, uh, let's just leave it at that. But the benefit to polarization is that it really does cut the glare. And so when you talk about polarized sunglasses, you know, that's one of the things that they advertise that they can do is they cut the glare when you're driving glare from other vehicles in the sun or whatever. So same thing goes for this as well. So now I want to talk about side lighting. And side lighting is mostly used when we're trying to enhance a texture, something that has some little 3D feature on it that we're interested in. That could be trying to get a feel for roughness, or if you've got like a peened in barcode or a QR code, or I, I just happen to have this in my office. So uh, hopefully this isn't me just like showing off, but um, the, the John Breen on here is etched in the back of this glass and so that's a texture. That's a thing that we can light up. And I'm gonna shine a light from the side. I want you to see how that, that just pops. And I can't do that on anything else from the side. So I can even bring down my exposure quite a bit to the point where I can hardly see anything. And I can light that up and that can be a way to do this inspection. A way to hide what I don't care about and to show what I do care about to make my inspection easier. Let's try the same thing now. I just showed it to you with ambient light. Let's try the same thing with the built-in light on this camera. 
And again, we'll just move this until we've got some kind of reasonable exposure. Now, this is with the diffuser on. So this is as diffuse as this light is gonna get with the supplied parts. This isn't really highlighting anything that we care about. It's making it hard to see the text. It's making it hard to see that text, which we were highlighting before. So obviously this is a bad application for top lighting like we're doing using the integrated lights. So uh, just another example to contrast. Here's another example of side lighting. So again, I'm, I'm going back to my coin example that I've used in other videos. I can brighten this up to try and see the image on here. And with this ambient lighting, that's kind of difficult. I can also try the built-in lighting. And uh, again, this is an old tarnished penny. It's probably gonna have a couple reflective spots and a lot that aren't very reflective. Let's bring this down to something reasonable. So we can actually see that picture okay. You know, lots of times when we're looking at these tiny little features, it's, there is no perfect, but the question is, is it good enough for the application? So we can see a picture. I want to give you another option. What if I turn on a side light? I've just got a flashlight over here coming at, coming at it from the side. And this is highlighting the things that, the features that are in this direction, and it's not highlighting the features that are in this direction, because one gets the strength of the light and shadow, and the other, the light just rakes across and ignores. And maybe this is helpful for us, or maybe it's not. Again, always depending on our application. If I bring our exposure down, we can really see that the highlights of the high points. And we can always move this light around a little bit to try and get it different to get it to highlight certain things over other things. What if I went this direction, for example? So again, lighting is the smarts outside of the logic, outside of the programming. So here's one more example. Uh, this is backlighting, an example of backlighting. And we use this when we're interested in measuring or inspecting or detecting just the outside edges of a part. So this isn't, uh, this isn't a perfect backlight, it's actually just a tablet, if you can't tell in the video. So you can kind of see these, uh, these refresh rates, these scan lines that are raking across the, the picture on the screen here. Uh, that obviously wouldn't be present in a real backlight that you'd buy for this kind of application. But I still think this is a really good example of backlighting. We've got ambient light even, and we've got these really crisp images. We've got a very dark image of a penny and a very white image of the background. So this would be great uh, for measuring the penny, let's say, or for just detecting that it's there. It's, this is a very easy application to do now because we've got such good contrast and we've hidden all the things that we don't care about. Well, thanks again for joining us. I've enjoyed going through this. I know there are a million and one more things that we could do with lighting and filtering. If you've got a specific application you're curious about, you've got a lighting question, please uh, put it in the comments. I'm watching those, I respond to them. I'm very interested in giving you guys what's helpful. I, I want it to be a positive impact in industry. So please uh, share it with your friends, subscribe, like it, and uh, Together, we'll, we'll make the world a better place. See you next time.